Shopping can be really addictive. It can be easy to fall into patterns of behavior that lead you to spending far more money than you anticipated. And because I'm somebody that's actively working towards spending less money, saving more, and moving towards minimalism, I decided to do a no buy January. And so this video is really gonna be focused on specific strategies I am going to use to get through the month of January, the list of rules that I'm going to try to follow during January, my mindset, my approaches, hopefully I'm gonna check in a few times throughout the month and let you know how it's going. And then at the end of the month, I'll report how it went. So by the time you're watching this video, it will be the end of January into February, I guess. And I'm excited to know what you now know in this video since I'm just starting the month now. But anyway, let's just get into it. Hi, if we haven't met before, I'm Aylin, and this is my channel, Slice of Light, where I talk about simple living, building an empowering mindset, and a little bit about photography and videography. If any of those topics interest you, please, please, please hit the subscribe button below. I don't have many subscribers, and I'd also really appreciate it if you end up liking the video, please hit the thumbs up button. So first of all, I want to share that I'm doing this no buy really with the goal of it being a kind of exercise to learn something about myself, what pitfalls do I fall into, what are triggers for me, things that might create urges or a desire to go shopping, and can I go a month without buying anything? I'm really interested to see how this goes. So the rules for this no buy are pretty simple. Basically, I don't want to buy anything except food and gas. That being said, I already do have roped in all my regular costs, so all my automatic payments, my rent, my subscriptions, I'm excluding from the snow buy. But other than that, as far as additional spending, I don't wanna make any purchases other than food and gas. I also wanna move into this with a good, healthy mindset that if I end up failing, that doesn't make me a failure and that I can still learn from it and that I can grow. So I really wanna think of this as a growth experience which is consistent with a concept I talk a lot about, which is growth mindset. This is about informing me about my shopping habits and knowing more about the psychological processes that might lead me to buy something. I think anytime any of us takes some kind of challenge on, it's important to make a goal that stretches us a little bit, but isn't way too hard. Like a month isn't that long to not buy anything, but it is probably longer than I typically go without buying something. And so it'll stretch me just a little bit. So wish me luck and we'll see how this goes. So I wanna give a quick update on how the first handful of days of the no buy are going. And thus far, I haven't bought anything except food or gas. And I honestly feel really good about it. Like it's purely been a positive experience up until now. And I'm almost surprised by that. I mean, I guess just a handful of days in, that's not that challenging yet. But I also have had a really positive reaction to it. Like I feel the sense of lightness, of relief, like a release of responsibility. And let me explain that a little bit more. It's like when I see that there's a sale on a site or a store that I often shop at, that I know there are items that maybe I kind of want or maybe think I might need in the future, Normally when I see that sale, I feel an obligation to go check out that sale to make sure I'm always getting the best deal on anything I'm buying. But what realistically happens is that I end up probably buying more than I would otherwise because I'm checking out the sale. I know, age old story but I genuinely fall victim to that process. And I think that by having this no buy, I have the sense of like, not only do I not have an obligation to go check out that sale, but I really shouldn't check out that sale. And I don't feel that like necessity to do that. Like I didn't realize how much of a chore shopping had really become to me in a certain sense, because I felt this obligation to find the best deal. I don't know, it just is so relieving. And I'm honestly really enjoying this no buy. I'm putting my energy and my focus into other things that matter to me and it feels good. I'm interested to see how it goes as the month progresses, but thus far, I feel really, really good about it and I'm so glad that I'm doing it. So I guess that's pretty much all I have to share today, but I will be checking back in soon, hopefully. Quick update. 
uh, that last night I did have a very tempting moment. My mom called me up and she told me about this incredible deal on a winter coat and it was just like a really good quality coat for a ridiculously good price and she sent me the link and said you have to buy this you have to buy this i thought it was such a good deal and such an incredible coat that i just thought maybe it's worth this one break because also i mean i have had the mindset i don't want to be super incredibly strict about it and so i was tempted to find my way around my no buy i decided at least i would sleep on it so that kind of gave me permission to just go to bed without purchasing it. And I really realized, you know what? I did not need that coat. I literally already have winter coats, like multiple winter coats, and I, I just don't need one. Yes, it's a good deal, but it's still that amount of money. So I just decided not gonna get it. Um, I can live without it. And weirdly, I feel really, really good about it now. And you know, I'm grateful to my mom for sending me a really great deal on a really high quality item, so I appreciate that, and I hope she continues to do it. But then it's ultimately up to me to make the decision about, is this really what I need right now? Is it really gonna add something to my wardrobe? Is it gonna be something I use? And to just delay enough to really have an ability to step back and think about the broader, bigger picture. I'm honestly kind of proud of myself, and I think having the strict no buy really helped as opposed to a low buy because maybe I would have been tempted with a low buy. Now, I'm all for low buys. I'm not trying to disparage low buys. I think in the long term, that's probably the answer. But doing this short-term no buy experiment, I think, has had its own specific uses and I have to acknowledge how tempted I was last night and that it was a really close call. So just wanted to report on that and hopefully we'll see how I go. We've got about 10 days left, so we'll see. I just want to give a quick little update since it's been a while. I have about five days left to this no buy January and I just wanted to share that admittedly it has been a little harder at moments to fight the urges to buy something as the month has gone on. I definitely also have noticed just that it's not necessarily even big purchases that I'm tempted about. It's even just like logistical things like getting Drano for my drain or um, getting an extra hand towel, like little things here and there, but really I could survive without it at least until the end of the month and then reevaluate if I still need it. It's just made me aware at how frequently these little things end up probably adding up that I don't even realize. And I do feel good about the fact that so far at least I have technically succeeded in this January no buy. So January is over, it's February now, and I just want to share some of my reflections on how this process went for me. I was able to follow the rules that I set out for my no buy, and I feel really, really good about it. The first thing I want to say is that overall, this was just a really positive experience. Like, there were definitely moments along the way where I was tempted to buy something or where something felt like a necessity, so maybe I could justify the purchase. But ultimately, those moments really just shed light on maybe some of my weak points and things I really need to be looking out for, traps that I tend to fall into, which is kind of excuse making, like I find reasons why there's a good justification for something when really I don't actually need it. So I think that brought an awareness to some of those kind of weak points for me. But I also think that I realized it wasn't like that big of a lifestyle change. Like, yes, I wasn't scrolling on my computer or phone as much shopping, and yes, I wasn't getting things in the mail or that sort of thing, but I didn't feel any actual decline in my happiness. Like, I was just as happy, perhaps even more so because, like I said earlier in the month, like, I didn't feel this burden of, 
oh, I need to shop to find the best deals when they're available to me. It was more like, well, I'm not supposed to shop, so I don't have to. And it was just such a relief and a feeling of lightness. And like I said, there were definitely low points where I was tempted or I was on the verge of buying it, but because I had a no buy, I could just say, at least wait out the night. And I think that's one strategy I wanna point out, even if you're not on a no buy, Delaying is a really positive tool for changing any kind of behavior. Like if you want to rid yourself of some kind of behavior, just setting an alarm even for 15 minutes to see if you still wanna do that behavior in 15 minutes or just saying I'll sleep on it and I'll decide if I wanna do that tomorrow can be a really effective tool in changing your behavior. And I definitely found that I used that tool this month so that I didn't break down and buy something that I didn't really need or didn't really want. I also just think that this no buy was such a great reset tool. Like it's kind of like, you know, when your computer is just getting like all clogged up and slowing down and you're just like, you know what, I need to restart. And you restart and it's just fresh and it's new. Somehow I think I had gotten into this cycle of shopping that was definitely leading me to spend more money than I would ideally like to spend. And just by having a month where I didn't buy anything, it was like resetting that computer. It was like re-evaluating my priorities, putting energy into things that I care more about. And ultimately, I think it was just really beneficial for me. And even now I'm six days into February and I don't actually feel as much of an urge to shop. Now, I'm not like free from any desire to ever shop again, I'm sure. But I feel like I naturally am not that motivated to shop and I just feel like I'm not obligated to shop. Like I'm not obligated to always find the best deal because really I shouldn't be shopping. And I've realized there's a power in that. And it felt really good to see the money that I make going all towards savings and towards bigger picture things that I want to be spending my money on. So if you're considering a no buy, I highly recommend giving it a try. Even if a month feels long, even doing a week or two weeks and seeing how it goes could make a little bit of a difference in your life and your style of shopping. I know a month also isn't that long. Maybe you wanna do two months or six months or a year, but I highly recommend it because it does just create this reset. And I do think though, I would be worried to do a no buy, for me at least, for much longer because I wanted to keep it pretty strict. Like I, I think I mentioned earlier in the month, like Drano as something that I need to get. And I do think this month I'll probably get that. Um, so I don't think necessarily having a no buy will work for me in the long run in that there might be things that I really, really need or that affect my life in meaningful ways. And so I think a month was a perfect amount of time for me where I was really able to just totally not buy and focus my energy and my finances on things that are more important to me. I don't know, maybe I'm like overhyping this no buy, but I just feel so refreshed. It's like I've gotten back in touch with myself instead of just being in touch with superficial objects. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but I honestly think it's been a huge eye-opener. It's allowed me to reset my priorities. I just don't have as much of that kind of like itch to shop. And I'm realizing I already have a lot of things in my closet or in my environment that I love and that I can enjoy all the more. Like I actually found that instead of dreaming of the thing that is gonna be arriving in the mail. Instead, I was dreaming of things that I already have in my closet and I was actually enjoying what I already have more, which I think is part of the point ultimately of minimalism as well. Again though, bigger picture, I think the biggest payoff was that I was just putting more time and mental energy into my relationships, into my work, into things that I actually care about and value, rather than these kind of like superfluous, superficial things. So that's, I think, what it really all comes down to is that I'm gonna move toward minimalism and focus on bigger picture values. I think my approach moving forward is to now shift into a low buy. I think I'm gonna be flexible about it, but maybe try to only make purchases that aren't totally necessary on like the first or second of every month, at least as much as possible, so that it's always like I need to wait until the first or second of the month. I think that type of system will help me delay a bit more and really discern what are items that are gonna be really meaningful or important to me rather than just kind of like buying them on the spot because they're a good deal right then and there. I think even if it means that I have to miss out on a sale and occasionally pay for something full price, I'm gonna end up saving a lot of money in the long run. That doesn't mean though that I won't save 
purchasing something until it goes on sale, I definitely think I'm gonna use that strategy, but I really just wanna have far more intentionality and planning going into any purchase that I'm making. I think those little things really add up. Like I didn't even realize how much it's even just the little things, not the big purchases that end up really costing me a lot of money. So I think I learned a lot about my own pitfalls and spending habits and what I can do to prioritize my deeper values in my life. I think ultimately that's just really what's important to me. So I think that's all I have for you, but I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you ended up liking the video, please hit the like button below. It would really help me. And please subscribe below if you ended up liking my content. It would mean a lot. So that's it, but thanks again, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.